Well, good morning. Um, my name's Sarah Jones, and it's my privilege to be with you uh, via this recording uh, for your Sunday service. I just want to wish you a happy Christmas from myself and Peter and Ethan. Um, we live up in Cleveland in Lancashire, and we're friends with um, you guys in Wickford and Alan and Betty, and we just want to, yeah, send our best and hope you all are doing really well. When we look back um, over this last year on life with all of its glory and its devastation and its victories and its sufferings and its abundance and its lack and its loss, you know, this morning, have you embraced this year? Are you living life or are you just clinging on? Are you just alive? Today, I really want to speak about choosing life. And as we look into arriving into 2020, looking back over, sorry, arriving into 2021, or feel like we've missed a year, um, and looking back on 2020, you know, just be encouraged today that we can choose uh, the year that our attitude of going into this year. So let me just pray. Father, I thank you for your word that it's alive and active. And I thank you, God, for every person that hears my voice today. Would they hear not just my voice, but the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus? Would they hear about this amazing God and the life that he does want to give us? Amen. Amen. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says this, The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. <clears throat> but I have come... Jesus has come. His purpose is to give us life and to have it to the full. Wow. If you do a word search um, on the word life, just in the book of John, John loves life. He's obsessed with talking about life and eternal life. It comes up time and time again. So in John chapter 1, uh, verse 4, it says, in him, Jesus, was life and that life was the light of men. Without him, you are in darkness. John chapter 3, whoever believes in him, Jesus, may have eternal life. Again in John 3, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever rejects the Son will not see life. John 6, I am the bread of life, Jesus says, and gives life to the whole world. Again, John 6, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are full of the spirit and of life. John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even when he dies, will live. John 14, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, I know to be true that you come alive spiritually. Before Christ, I was spiritually dead or my antenna to the, the spirit of God was, was faulty, wasn't working. But when we receive Christ, when we receive Jesus, receive his life, we get eternal life as well. The apostle Paul has a way with words and he uses words about life. He says he urges us because of this new life we have received. Live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Hold firmly to the word of life and then you will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labour in vain. Live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way. I consider my life Nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race, complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. And when Christ appears, who is your life, then you will also appear in glory. Wow. I love this. This phrase has come to me over the last couple of years that I just love to live my life wide open to God. To live your life wide open to God. And even in as we come into 2020. 2021, would you this morning recognise that, God, I want to live my life wide open to you? Lord, I don't know what to do, but Lord, I position myself before you in humility, open. Jesus, you know the way, you have the answers. Lord, what are you teaching me here? What's going on here? What is truth? 
What am I believing, Jesus, that is getting me confused? What is going on in me? Why am I having this re reaction? Jesus, I live wide open to you, to your discipline, to your leading, to your correction, to your love. When was the last time you prayed these sorts of prayers where you're just wide open to God, to hearing him, positioning yourself in him? And when we pray these kind of prayers, he speaks. He speaks. This is the, the relationship that we're designed to have, this dialogue. You see, the enemy, as I read before, comes to steal, kill and destroy. He wants you dead. He wants you in death. He wants you in destruction and fear and lack and isolation and debt and failure. But Jesus has a, another life to give us. Life for today and eternal life. And I love Romans 6, 13 that says, Offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. An instrument, something that has purpose that makes a sound that has use are you living with that purpose this morning like a musical instrument do you bring a good sound bring pleasure bring enjoyment to those around you like a works workman's tool that is used and oiled and is crafted and and does something this morning would you choose life would you choose jesus the way the truth and the life all the scriptures on life is just phenomenal romans five eighteen. Just as one trespass, what Adam did, resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act, what Jesus did on the cross, resulted in justification and life for everyone. In John, in 1 John 5, it says, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. Okay, I hope you're getting the picture here. But you see, right back in Deuteronomy, we have this same word, this same thing, this same theme coming up. There is this constant thread throughout scripture of life. And we'll look at, at the chapter 30 in a moment. And here in this story, you, we find that the Israelites are stood on the Jordan River about to cross into the promised land. And I just want to rattle through some biblical overview of where this story is up to. So this is in Deuteronomy, but there are five books in the beginning of the Bible, and these are called the Torah. The Torah means instructions or teaching. So we have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. And this is all the story of God choosing a nation by which he can show the world that he is the one and true living God. So in Genesis, you have the creation account. You have the, and I'm totally overviewing all of this, but you have the creation account. You have the call of Abraham, the father of faith. He's married to, to Sarah and God promises them a son, but they don't want to wait that long. And so they end up stepping out of God's will and they have Esau. Then finally, their promised son is born, Isaac. His son is Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons. Of one of the one of those 12 sons is Joseph. Joseph and the amazing technical of dream coat and he becomes a great leader and saves a nation from famine. So Jacob's family, Joseph's brothers, they are in Egypt, the Jews, and they become a great people, prosperous, powerful. And when Joseph dies, a new king rises up comes into power and recognises that the Jews have become so numerous and so powerful that they become a threat to him, even though they're not. And he possesses, oppresses them and takes them captive. So now you have the Jewish people that are slaves in Egypt. They have not had their own land for about 400 years. They have been slaves for 200 years. And then God raises up a man called Moses. And we come to the book of Exodus. Let my people go, the plagues, Pharaoh, the death of the firstborn. And now that the Jews are finally released and no sooner are they released that Pharaoh's army are hot on their tails. The Jews have arrived at the, at the sea and Moses stretches out his staff to the water and the water parts and there is a wall of water on each side of the sea and the, and the Jewish people walk across on dry land. 
They get to the other side, but the Egyptian army are chasing them through the sea on the dry land. But then Moses turns around, stretches out his staff and the waters come over them, destroying the Egyptian army. God is God. And he says, choose me and you will live. And then you have the the giving of the Ten Commandments, the Ark of the Covenant. And you have the story of this rebellious moaning group of people. Then you come to Leviticus and God is wanting the people to understand his holiness, that he desires them to be holy. So there are instructions and offerings and ceremonies and celebrations that they are to follow. Then we get to the book of Numbers and there are painstaking details of censuses and priestly instructions for the ark and the tabernacle where the tribes should camp. The nation has still not entered the promised land at this time. But we get to chapter 13 and Moses sends out 12 spies to look and bring back a report of the land of Canaan, that land that is flowing with milk and honey. And how does the story go? Ten people come back with a bad report. Two come back, Joshua and Caleb, with a good report. But the ten influence a whole nation. And by this time, God has had enough of this people's rebellion, their lack of faith, their disobedience, that the whole generation, except Joshua and Caleb, die in the wilderness and do not enter the promised land. So they wait 40 years for that generation to die out. And then we get to Deuteronomy. And the Jews are at the Jordan River. All that generation has died. Joshua and Caleb are now uh, uh, about to step in. Can you imagine the excitement, the nerves? The last time they get, they got this close to stepping into the promised land, they, they doubted God and they bottled it. And Moses is gathering a new generation of people that are about to possess the land that he's promised. And he rallies them and he reminds them. And Deuteronomy means the second giving of God's law. The whole book of Deuteronomy is a reminder and it repeats itself from where they have come from. It's a prep talk before Moses dies. Sorry, spoiler alert, alert. Moses dies at the end of this book. But God's promise to to Abraham all those years ago that you're my chosen people, that he would be faithful in rescuing them, his holiness, his punishment for disobedience. And Moses is focusing the people. Look, we have a wonderful God, he says. We are to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind and strength. and, And you will live. And he's saying all this before He hands the baton to Joshua, his successor. And so he renews the law again to the nation. And at the end of this great speech, he says this, which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11 to 20. It says this now, this is Moses speaking. Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it, proclaim it so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey. See today I set before you life and prosperity death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, degrees and laws. Then you will live and de- live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are about to enter and possess. But if your heart turns away from me, you are not obedient. And if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This is the day I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord your God is your life 
and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. What a great passage. But it says in these words, it says six times of life and to live. And he's saying, look, it isn't too hard for you that it's up in heaven or it's not that you have to cross the sea to get it. If you want life, it's your responsibility to choose it. You choose it this day so that your family may live. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. There is power in our tongue, church. We have before us to choose life and death. What we are, who are we going to believe? Whose side are we going to be on? Choose Jesus today. Choose him every day. And as we're coming to the end of this year, I set before you life and death. You choose. But to get life is a choice. And we are to live wide open to God. To God. Jesus' main and first command is the same of that that Moses said. What flows out of everything is this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbour as yourself. Nothing has changed and this people are about to cross over into their destiny and Moses is giving them this opportunity. Excuse me, what does this chapter say brings death? When your heart turns away, when you are not obedient, and when you are drawn away by other gods. Not rocket science, is it? But other gods, let me just look at other gods briefly. You see, the Israelites are about to enter the promised land. And Moses is reminding them that there is only one God. The land you are about to go into is full of other gods that will entice you and seduce you and confuse you. But don't confuse them with our God. He is not like other gods, small g. They are not on a similar level. Gen level. Genesis 1 in the beginning was God. God is eternal, independent. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, omnipresent. God has life in himself. He relies on no one. You see, gods, small g, they need us. We have to make them. We have to keep them alive. And I've been to India and I've been to South America and man, they are serious about gods and shrines out there on ev outside a lot of houses on every corner, worshipping physical idols. And this is not our Western culture, our Western way of thinking, but we too have gods, things that we worship, things that we give money to, that we keep alive, that we give our attention to. And you might not pay a high price for the latest shrine, but what about the high price for our material possessions? You see, worship means to give honour to, to give something worth, worth. It is an expression of what we value. So when it comes to us gathering as believers or when we worship, it is when we are singing and putting God in his rightful place, when we are honouring him, we are, when we are giving him value. And that is how we are at to outwork our day, our life, giving God his worth. So what do you give the most worth in your life, your, the most value to? What is it that you are worshipping? Maybe you could admit today that, you know, your heart has become cold. You've, you've turned away from God. Or maybe you're living in disobedience to God. And I, had, I don't have time to expand on that. But Holy Spirit, what, what are the gods in our lives? What are the areas that we have turned away from, that we have become cold to you in? You see, we are at the end of 2020. And maybe you can look back over this year and you can think, wow, what a year. I'm glad it's over. But let's not miss what God is doing, what God is wanting to get our attention to do. Make sure you leave this year better. Make sure you leave this time where you are, you know, you've given some time and thought to the attention of your heart before God. And this is a great opportunity to choose life, to choose Jesus and maybe there needs to be some readjustment this morning, some repositioning to the source of life, the giver of eternal life. But you see, the Bible starts with life. In the beginning, God, it says, breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. In the beginning, there were two trees. 
the tree of life and the tree of good and knowledge of good and evil, which leads to death. So right back in the beginning, there was this choice. Is it life or is it death? You choose. And unfortunately, they chose death. They chose death. And sin entered history, separating us from the giver of life, the source of life. They chose to want to become their own God. They wanted, they, they chose to harden their hearts to God. And the tree of life is also at the end of the story, told by John in Revelation that the new earth, in the new earth, there will be no more death. There will be no more tears or suffering, but there will be a river of life and the tree of life will be on its banks. Wow, we will get to eat of the tree of life in glory. But I want to eat of the tree of life now because we are promised of another tree. And that is the tree of the cross, that Christ Jesus hung on a cursed tree for you and me. He took our place. He died our death so that we could live. He died to give us life. He became the curse for you and me to set us free from the curse of sin, of sin and death. And in Romans 5, just reminding us of that verse, it said, one man's sin brought death and that came into the world. But one man's obedience, righteous life has come. You see, the tree of the cross changes everything. A tree of life that enables us to experience something of the end of the story now. The promise that when we die, we will live. We are now living in days of hope days of that tension. When we receive the life of Jesus, we receive that he is the bread of life, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth of life, the giver of life. He doesn't leave us as orphans, but he's given us Holy Spirit, the one who enables us, that constant companion who empowers us to live this life, to live this life now. We see throughout the scriptures that there was a choice right at the beginning from Adam and Eve to choose life. Through the Israelite, Israelites, they had to choose life and it relates to us now, a choice. It is in your mouth and in your heart. Love God, live, live a life wide open to him and do what he says and you will live. You know, my last thought, we make hundreds if not thousands of choices in our lives mostly insignificant like what am i going to wear today what's my hair going to look like what am i going to have for my dinner but probably the biggest choice that will change your life is will you choose jesus maybe you've never received jesus into your life before or maybe as a christian sat here today you you know that, you know what, I've not been making the most of my life. I've made wrong choices for my life and for my family. I'm not being obedient or I've turned my heart away from God or there are other gods in my life. Think about, do the people in your life bring you life? Does that habit bring you life or does it bring you death? Does spending that sort of money bring you life or does it bring you death? You know, we have a choice at the end of this year to say, Jesus, I choose life. I choose you today. I choose you today. And maybe you're doing that for the first time or the hundredth time. But I, I want to keep saying it every single day. Maybe just where you're sat, you could actually say those words out loud. Jesus, I choose you. I choose life. So Heavenly Father, as we, as we commit this time to you, I thank you for every person um, that is part of Wickford uh, Family Church and I, I pray your blessing upon pastor, uh, the pastors there and, and God, the church family. God, for Alan and Betty and the team, God, I pray that they would choose life and know your life in abundance. 
Father, over this Christmas time where it's considerably different to normal, maybe more stripped back, I pray that we would actually experience more life than ever this year, that you would readjust our focus. So Heavenly Father, we, we say come and fill us afresh with your love, with your spirit. And maybe for the first time you're just saying yes to Jesus today. Jesus, I choose you. I choose you. I want my life to work. I live my life wide open to you, God of heaven. And maybe you just need assurance of salvation, assurance of eternal life. God, put that assurance in people's hearts today that you are theirs and they are yours. Well, God bless you. Have a great Christmas. We'll hopefully see you as a family in the in the not so distant future, but hopefully next year at some point. All right. God bless and bye bye.